Hi everybody, here we are in this video. We are going to graph a polynomial function. We have one in this video and we have one after this video. It'll pop up in the thumbnails at the end. Um, and these two are pretty vanilla examples. If you want something a little bit more exciting and interesting, I mean, go ahead and go through my graphing polynomial. Yeah, get it. Uh, graphing polynomial playlist. I'll also put that in a thumbnail at the end as well. All right, so let's get into this one. We are sketching the polynomial. We don't call it graphing because we're not going to be precise with the extrema, also known as your maximums and minimums. You need a calculus or calculator in order to be really precise. So we are what we call sketching. <clears throat> so the steps I like to follow are e f z a p l g exotic funky zebras avoid purple little grapes unless you could think of something better or rearrange it and fix it for me put it in the comment greatly appreciated thanks e is end behavior so we have a positive and we have an even you get the end behavior when it's in standard form from the leading term. We care about the sign of the leading term, positive, and we care about the degree of the polynomial, which is the exponent on the leading term. Anything positive has the right side ending upward, and if it's in even degree, then the beginning, think like it stays even, balanced, it's also up. So your end behavior is up and up, F is for factor. Anytime you're looking at almost, we call it like a quadratic type, it almost looks like AX squared plus BX plus C. As long as this exponent, okay, is double the value of this exponent. As long as that's true, you could factor it using like AC method, factor it like a quadratic. The middle term, X squared, is going to be what we put right here. Normally the middle term is x, right? And we usually put x in those spots. x squared is going to go there. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth because you add the powers now because you multiply. Plus 9. 9 could be 1 and 9 or 3 and 3. I have a 10 in the middle. I'm looking at 9 and 1 or 1 and 9. If this is a plus sign, both of these signs are the same. What are they? Whatever that sign is. So minus and minus. So that's layer one of factoring. However, you always want to factor fully, fully factor. What are we looking at now? I'm glad you asked. We have two differences of two squares. Square roots in your head and use some conjugates. X plus three, X minus three, X plus one and x minus 1. There we go. So fully factor. That behavior is done. Factor is done. Zero product property. You set each factor of the entire product equal to 0 individually because you're really putting in 0 for y, which means you're finding your x-intercepts. So what do we end up getting when we solve? My dog is burying his little treat right now in the other room and he barks for me to come find it because he's very proud of himself he like buries it in a pillow and then he stands there and barks and like I walk in and he looks at me and he looks at where he buried it and he's like can you find it and I dig it out and he's so excited so there's a little barking going on oh just kidding he's staring at me right now I don't think you can see him Come here. Wanna come up? Come up, up. He's gonna make me look like a liar. These are my x-intercepts, so zero product property is done. Come here. Cookie? Come here. He wants a cookie. Up. Okay, you see, yeah. Speak. Good job. All right, <clears throat> sorry. A is for axes. 
So I'm only drawing the part I care about. And that's going to be basically where the x values I need to use are located. So 3, 1, um, negative 3, negative 1, get some arrows, x, y. Okay, axes are set up. Um, P is plot. When I plot, I don't just plot my x-intercepts, I also plot the end behavior. Up and up. Plot is done. L has two jobs. It's going to be local behavior and label. So local behavior, you look at the multiplicity, which is the power on the factor. So you want to know, like, sure, my x-intercept's negative 3, but how is it an x-intercept? Does it touch and bounce off? Does it cut through? Does it do a little cubic action over there? Since they're all first power, that means they're all linear. They're all going to look, when you're really close to it, they're going to look like, oh, maybe it's just a line. Like it slices nice and straight through it. So that means I'm going to just go ahead. All right, so local behavior and label done. Straight through, but you got to be nice and smooth connecting. So straight through, sure. Straight through and straight through. But when we draw a polynomial, always smooth and continuous. Make it as nice and smooth as you can. Also, we said we're sketching, so we don't know how high and low to draw all the little humps. But we do our best. Beautiful. And that's it. That is it. Oh, also, if you're drawing it, I would suggest you start always drawing it if you're not a professional grapher, on the right side, because if you mess up your end behavior, you're more likely to mess up the left than the right. So start at the right and just trust that it all works out. Okay? Graph is done. So there you have it. I will thumbnail the stuff I mentioned at the end of the video right now. If you're smarter and you know it, click thumbs up. And if you're not, you can write me an angry comment or something. Um, and if you can make up a better mnemonic device for that, sharing is caring. Okay? Uh, click through for whatever you need. And I hope you're having a great day. Bye.